Yes, hello, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. And yes, we're gonna be going through everything you need to know before you hit the race course. This is just the essentials for those of you who haven't done so much racing before or any at all. This video is indexed, by the way, so you can skip ahead to the section that interests you most, or you could just watch the whole thing. The most important thing while we're out on the race course is that we are going to avoid collisions. The two best tools that we have to help avoiding collisions is firstly, spatial awareness. So while you're out on the boat, it's very important that you always know where all of the other boats are on the race course that are in close proximity to you or could be an issue in the future. So spatial awareness will use alongside thinking ahead. So with our example here, if we've got two boats back here, thinking ahead, we might think if we're this boat, which is gonna to have to keep out of the way, all right, maybe we'll do something about it now rather than leaving our avoiding maneuver until the last minute, which is not gonna be very efficient and might cause a collision. Now, sailing boat racing is a self-refereeing sport most of the time, especially at the amateur level of the sport. So it's up to everybody on the race course to be sailing, using the rules, cheating is not tolerated. And if somebody does infringe a rule, then there is a way to exonerate yourself. That is to make it better. And in catamaran racing, to exonerate yourself, what you can do, if we've just infringed a rule, we can do a 360 degree turn, which is basically one tack, bear away, one jibe, and then back onto the original course that you were on. If somebody infringes a rule against you, you can just shout the word protest. It's your intention to take that boat to the protest room unless that boat exonerates himself by doing a 360 degree turn. So this boat is said to be on starboard tack. The blue arrow is the wind. So the wind is coming over the right side of the boat first. The right side of the boat is called starboard. This boat is on starboard tack. This boat here, the wind is coming over the left side of the boat first. The left side we call port, um, and in sailing, port gives way to starboard. So if they were on a collision course, the boat on port tack could either tack onto starboard tack, avoiding the collision, or to turn to go around the back of the boat on starboard. If you are the boat which has right of way, it's a good idea if it looks like there is another boat, maybe they haven't seen you or they're busy or they think they can pass in front, but it's always a good idea to let them know that you're there. And the best way that you can do this is by shouting at the other boat, starboard. So port and starboard can happen on an upwind leg like this. It could happen if we were reaching across the wind towards each other and it could happen if we were sailing downwind. So when we're on two opposite jibes downwind. So if you're the starboard boat, keep your eyes out for any boats on port that you may need to shout at. If you're on port tack, then definitely keep your eyes out for any boats on starboard tack. If we have two boats on the same tack, so these two boats are on port tack, the boat which is nearer to where the wind is coming from, we're calling that windward. The windward boat, so that is this boat in this situation, the windward boat shall keep clear. Uh, so in this situation, he would just have to turn up like this. Um, of course, this boat may have already come around the mark and be going downwind, but they're on the same tack. So this is still the windward boat. So he 
has to keep clear of this boat. The boat which is overtaking must keep clear of the boat which is in front. Most races these days are taking place around what is called a windward, leeward or leeward course. So what we have is firstly we have a start line. The start line would usually in open water be between what is called the committee boat. So this might be a small motor boat, it might be a yacht or a keel boat, could be absolutely anything, a fishing boat, any boat which is an anchor. This is the boat which the starting signals will be coming from and then directly opposite that in relation to the wind, so the wind will be fairly square onto the start line, there'll be a small buoy or perhaps a buoy with a flag on it. This will be what we call the pin end of the start line. From the start line we'll then sail upwind, so usually something like this, we sail around the windward mark. In most sailing boat racing we leave the marks to the left side, so we'll be coming round the mark, turning downwind and then we'll have a downwind leg which will take us to the second mark and then if this was a one lap race we'd be going around the, the downward mark or the leeward mark and then back up through the finish line to finish. A common alternative to this would just be to have the start and finish line the other side of the leeward mark. So the difference here would be we'd sail upwind around the mark then downwind and if we were finishing we go straight through the line there. Um, the number of laps would usually be indicated perhaps on the committee boat or perhaps on land before you go out to sail. If we were going to be sailing more than one lap then again we sail around the top mark. We don't necessarily have to go this way on the downwind, we can go both ways on the upwind or downwind and then around the mark, second lap and then down through the finish line. In bigger races and regattas uh, there might be some extra marks on the course, so at the windward mark there might be what is called a spacer or a spreader leg um, which is just to the side of the windward mark. The idea with this mark is it takes the boats going downwind further away than the boats which are still going upwind which makes it less likely that there would be collisions. And then very common in um, international racing or a lot of bigger meetings on the race course is to have what's called a gate at the downwind mark which gives you the option around one boy or the other boy. With the gate we're always going from the inside and turning to the outside. Then of course you might be racing where there is a more confined area of water, like if you're sailing on a big river then you might have something like this arrangement where the start line and finish line might actually be between the sailing club and a marker on the other side of the river so they then might have a number of boys placed up the river and they'll give the boys an easy to remember name and then on land they would have what the course is so they might say it's A, B, C, A, B, A, B, finish which would look something like this with the wind in this direction you might go A, again generally leaving the marks on the left side. A, B, C, A, B, A, B, finish. The main objectives when you're starting a race is to be crossing the start line when the timer expires, not being early and with clean wind and going the right way. So clean wind means that there's not another boat between where the wind is coming from and your sails because 
if you're in this position, he's gonna be sucking all of the wind away from your sails. You're not gonna be able to sail as quickly or you're not gonna be able to point as close to the wind. In the instructions of the race, there would be what's called a starting sequence that has been talked about. A starting sequence would usually be a five minute sequence. So it is a good idea to have a good watch with a countdown timer on. The starting sequence is indicated from the committee boat using sound signals and flags. So at five minutes, the first flag would go up. This flag, again, it would have been said in the instructions what flag it's going to be. So when that flag goes up, along with the sound signal, you start your watch, five minute timer, and then when that five minute timer goes, it's a good idea just to go and sail across the start line like this. So on an upwind point of sail, to sail across the start line. So you get a kind of general feel for how it's going to be. The, what we're looking to do is with about two minutes to go, we want to be in a position where we can sail across the start line from a position where we don't have to tack. So somewhere around here is a good spot. And then as the time approaches, gets nearer, there may be other flags. Usually there would be a second flag that goes up on one minute and you can then just time your run. So have the sails loose to go slower, pull the sails in tighter to increase speed. You can also, of course, turn your boat closer to the wind to lose speed or slightly further away from the wind to gain speed. We just need to make sure that we are going to make it around this buoy on the correct side. So a good starting strategy, if it is your first or an early race in your racing career, is to aim to hit the middle of the line when that starting time elapses. But you may say, aren't there likely to be other boats trying to do exactly the same thing? Yes. So on a start, a lot of the time, people are trying to start as close to the committee boat as possible. So you might get a lot of boats further over to the right. We'll call this the pack. So there might be a lot of other boats here. So this would be with about one minute to go. If you get into the pack, it takes a lot of your options away, especially if you're not so experienced. So it is better to position yourself just to the downwind side of the main pack of boats if you can. And from this position, you then have the option to turn away from the wind a bit. If you're a bit early, you can go down the line. If you're a bit late, stay on your course and really get your boat up to speed. And then ideally what we're looking to do, if we're going middle of the line, is to get a gap. We'll just move the line a little bit. So if this is you, the ideal is to have a gap between you and the next boat to leeward. What this gap does for you is it means that when you start the race, you're able just to turn ever so slightly downwind from your normal upwind course, which is gonna give you much better speed and stop these boats from sailing over the top of you and taking your wind potentially. If you do happen to cross the start line early, um, if it's really blatantly early, then a lot of the time you can just duck back down beneath the line and then start again. But if it's a bigger regatta, they might have a rule in place called the round the ends rule Again, this would be in your instructions. Um, and if you have gone across the line early, then that means you have to go around the end of the start line and restart the race. If you are restarting the race because you were early, so even if you're on starboard tack and they're on port tack, they would have right of way 
because you're not racing and they are. You're not racing when you're going back to restart the race. Now, if you really are concerned about being in the thick of it with the other boats, you could also always just position yourself far over to the right, further over to the right than any of the other boats and just basically follow the other boats in. And the objective there is going to be to sail as close to the back of the committee boat as possible and then turn upwind when you get to the committee boat and then you can start your upwind leg. If there are a lot of the boats over the start line early, this is called a general recall. The flag looks like this. And if there's going to be a general recall after the starting signal, which will be a, a honk of the horn, there'd be another two honks of the horn. And that indicates to you that it's a general recall. If there's just one or two boats which have started prematurely, then this flag will go up along with a second sound signal. So if you hear that second sound signal, you need to think, am I further forwards on the start line than most of the other boats? And if you feel that you were, then you're probably early on the start and need to restart the race, how we spoke about earlier. When you go out for a start of the race, the other flag that you really need to know is the postponement flag, which looks like this. The postponement flag means that for some reason, uh, the race committee aren't ready to start the race. One other thing with the starting, you may have noticed in all of these examples, all of the boats have been starting on starboard tack. Now that is because on starboard tack, you have right of way over boats on port tack. And if you're just starting to race, you're not ready to start on port tack. It is way too hectic. So from the start line, we need to sail up to the windward mark to turn around it, leaving it on the left side of the boat. So these lines which are on the board, these are what we're calling lay lines. And the lay line that we need to be aware of is this one on the right side of the buoy. And what the lay line is, because when we tack, we end up at approximately 90 degrees to the course that we started on. When we cross this lay line, we know that if we tack, we'll be able to get around the buoy. If we tack before the lay line, we're not going to be able to get around the buoy and we're going to have to tack another two times at least before we're able to get around the buoy. We want to sail about two thirds of the way from the start line to this port side lay line. So we're going to want to tack about there. Now, the reason that we're not going all the way to the lay line is because if we do, unless we're coming first or last, there might be quite a queue of boats already on this lay line. Now, these boats are on starboard tack, which means they're going to have right of way, which makes it very difficult for you to get around the buoy. Whereas if we tack a bit earlier, we're more likely to end up behind the queue of boats if there is a queue of boats. Of course, you might be first, great stuff, but of course you might not be, which means tacking a bit earlier down here is a good idea. So we're going to end up here, we'll cross the ley line and then we'll tack and then we'll be able to pass around the buoy easily. So this is a very general strategy, two thirds of the way towards the port side ley line, tack, continue on that tack um, and then once you've crossed the ley line to the buoy on the starboard side, you can then tack and then you'll be able to pass around the buoy. Now, the difference to that strategy will be if the wind isn't constant over the whole course. And in catamaran racing, what we always want to aim for is to get into the strongest wind as soon as we can. Because with stronger wind, we are, this might sound obvious, we're going to be sailing much faster. 
So if the wind is much stronger on the right side of the course, then coming from the start line, you might aim to tack off much earlier to get over to that side of the course before your competitors. Now, this is obviously going to come into play when we come around for a second lap, because if we've just been around the leeward mark, if it's a single leeward mark, that is going to naturally put you on the port tack, sending you over to the right side of the course. And as you may be aware, in catamaran racing or sailing generally, tacking takes a little bit longer. So you might feel, all right, we'll go over to the right side of the course because we don't want to put in one, two, three tacks. Instead, we'll go all the way to the starboard ley line and then it's just one tack to get around the buoy. This strategy is what we call banging the corners. Tactics are what are when we're talking about if there's two boats together. So the main thing we have to look at here, like we spoke about before, is dirty wind. So if you're on this boat, this boat is giving you dirty wind. Basically, the wind is gonna come off his sail and this whole area is going to be affected wind, which if you're sailing in this area, you're not gonna be able to sail as fast or point as close to the wind. Three options that we could do here. Option number one is just to tack and go to the other side of the course. Another option might be just to sit and take it. So why would we sit and take it if we definitely don't want to go to the other side of the course or if we think he's going to tack fairly soon. Option number three might be just to say, okay, we're going to try to sail a bit faster. So you bear away a little bit. And even in the dirty wind, you should be able to get a bit more boat speed, which means you can break out of the dirty wind. You'll lose quite a lot of space to windward, but at least we're not sat in that dirty wind anymore. The other thing we need to talk about is when you're approaching this starboard ley line, let's say you are approaching here, we need to be safe, but we don't want to throw away a lot of positions. The ultimate safest thing to do in this situation would actually be to bear away, go around the whole fleet before you tack. But that is really throwing away a lot of ground. So what is much better to do is if there is a gap, then just to bear away slightly and go as close to the back of these boats as you possibly can. And then when you're happy that you're not going to be in dirty wind, then that is when you should tack to go around the buoy. Okay, so another reason why we wouldn't want to approach the windward mark on the port ley line is because if we're coming in like this to go around this way, that means we have to, we're going to have to turn the boat through a full 180 degrees. So we're going to have to tack and then bear away onto the new side to get around the buoy. And we're not going to carry any momentum through that turn. So that is another reason why approaching the buoy on that ley line isn't so good. So if we are approaching the buoy on the starboard ley line, our general strategy for getting around the buoy, as we approach the buoy, we're gonna be wide. So about a, boat, a boat's width away from the buoy is a good starting point. And then as we turn downwind, we want to be easing the sails as we turn. So we're really getting the maximum amount of speed out of the boat as we turn downwind and then we want to come out of the buoy as tight as possible. So this boat here has come out tight whereas if you've gone in tight it's difficult to come out tight so you might end up much further up which means we've already lost this distance on the downwind leg. Now as we turn around the buoy um, we don't have to jibe all we're doing is bearing away and then perhaps we will decide to jibe, but that will be in the next section. 
And just if we do find ourselves having to tack close to the buoy, don't tack as soon as you're on 90 degrees uh, to the buoy because what happens a lot is you get actually get blown onto the mark and there is a penalty for hitting one of the racing boys and that is a 360 degree turn. So try to avoid that. General strategy is if on the upwind leg it paid, as in we got a benefit by going to the right side of the course, then you should go to the right side of the course on the downwind leg. Unless, of course, you're sailing in tide or current. We're not going to go into that in this chat. If the course was fairly even and there wasn't any great benefits to have on either side of the course, then it really is a matter of avoiding traffic. Staying away from traffic is a very good thing to do if you can, because traffic is one way or another, it's going to hold you up. Our general jibing angle is 90 degrees. So the ley line from the leeward mark is going to be the complete opposite of the windward mark. So once we cross that line, we know that when we jibe, we're going to be able to get around the leeward mark. This is our very basic strategy. In stronger wind, do be aware that our jibing angle might be less, so you'll have to jibe earlier. In lighter wind, our jibing angle might be a little bit more, so we might have to jibe a bit later. Now, if the wind was better on the right side of the course, then we want to get over there as soon as we can. So jibing quite close to the mark is a good idea, unless there are boats coming up wind like this. Because if there's boats coming up wind, they're going to have right of way over you because you're going to be on the same tack and you're the windward boat. And the most important thing around the whole race course is staying out of trouble and not getting affected by the other boats. So similar to the upwind strategy is if we are going to go over to the right, we don't want to leave it until we're on that ley line coming into the buoy because again, when we come in here, that would give us a full 180 degrees that we have to turn through. So just make sure that when you put the next jibe in, it's going to be a good three or four, maybe even five boat lengths before you get to the buoy. That's going to make your life much easier. But on the downwind leg, if especially on a shorter course, you are going to have to jibe much sooner than you think you will. The tactics downwind and dirty wind on the downwind leg is this boat, his sail is between the wind and this boat. So if you're in this boat, it's like, do you want to just sit and take it? So it is within your rights, as long as you give time and opportunity, you can sail a little bit closer to the wind. That's going to help you to sail faster. And sometimes that's going to be your method to getting out of this dirty wind from this boat. Because if you can just nudge ahead slightly, then you're getting good wind and you're getting out of the dirty wind. So if you're this boat overtaking on the windward side, do be aware that the boat that you're overtaking might decide to do that. When to jibe, if it's a long downwind leg, the best time to jibe is when you're in a gust, just as you've had the real meat from the gust and you feel perhaps that gust is backing off, then if you jibe at that point, that means that you're quite likely to benefit from that gust for longer on the other side. Okay, this is the leeward mark. We'll just focus on a one mark leeward mark to start with. So at the leeward mark, there is a special rule. If when the first boat coming in 
enters into this three boat length zone from the mark, this is of course estimated, so it can be the cause for protests. But um, if when you enter into the zone, if any boat has an inside overlap, that means if we take a line off the transom of the boat perpendicular, if any part of this boat is further forwards than this line, it means this boat then has the rights to the inside line around the buoy. Again, shouting is very good. So if you are this boat, good idea to shout water at the mark. And then if that happens, the boat on the outside has to give you basically enough space to get around the buoy. He doesn't have to give you enough space to do a really nice mark rounding, just enough space to get around the buoy. Um, of course, there may be other boats involved. So there might be another boat here, maybe even here. So as you go in, like if this is you, water at the mark, but then as you sail into the zone, this boat may call water on you, which means you have to go even deeper downwind to get around the buoy. Uh, this could happen. If there's a boat coming in on the other tack, we can see that he is inside this line. So he has right of way over everybody. With our leeward mark rounding, let's just assume we're going round alone. Then the best leeward mark rounding, just like with the windward mark rounding, is to go in wide and come out tight. So we're setting ourselves up as well as we can for the next leg of the course. Perhaps when you're about two or three boat lengths away from the buoy, that's a good time to bring the traveler in on the mainsail. So then as you turn around the buoy, you should be sheeting the main and the jib in so that the sails are set perfectly as you go around and that's going to give you the best speed to as you exit the buoy. So in the situation where we've got a gate, the same thing will probably be happening at both buoys. Now you may think, now how do I choose which gate mark to go round? Well, like we said, if we feel that one side of the course or the other is definitely favoured, then take the buoy, which is going to put you on that tack. If there's not too much of a favoured side to the course, then the best idea is to go the side where there's least traffic. Because what is really going to hold you up on the upwind leg is if you come around the buoy and you're directly behind another boat, you're going to start eating his dirty wind, sailing slower and not going so well. So finally, once we finish the race, yes, it is firstly very important once we've crossed the finish line to stay clear of the finish line because we can't be holding up other boats that are still racing after we've finished. That is against the rules and not very sporting. But after you finish the race, it is a very good opportunity to reflect on how that race went, what worked well, what didn't work so well. Um, and then if you're having another race, you can then apply what you've just found out in the next race.